With no further ado, I believe that we are here to hear a word from the Lord on today. And with a heart of expectancy, we welcome our beautiful, powerful pastor, the woman of God, Pastor Joanne Rosario Condry, who's going to bring the word this morning. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Welcome into a new year. Happy New Year. It is the first Sunday of 2016, and I have great expectation for this year. Amen. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, sweet and precious Holy Spirit, we can do nothing without you. And I thank you right now that your presence is in this place. I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to be in, in your perfect will. And I'm so grateful and so thankful that you were patient with me and that same patience that you had with me to bring me to this point now, you give me that love and that patience for those, Father God, that I'm called to shepherd. And I thank you, God, that you are, Father God, teaching us, aligning us, Father God, and bringing out of us everything that you placed in us. Father God, we're going to see things in this year that we have never seen. We're going to do things in this year that we have never done. We are never going to decline in a year as we move forward. But every year will become greater and greater because the more we walk with you, the greater things and life and purpose and destiny will become. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, my dear. I appreciate you. I'm going to start talking to you uh, about vision. We're going to talk a little bit about vision. Today, this morning, I'm going to share with you part one. Uh, next Sunday, I'm going to share with you part two. So I need you to come back, okay? Um, I know that uh, everybody is on their P's and Q's because we have made our New Year's, New Year's resolutions and we have said I'm going to eat better, I'm going to uh, come to church on time. I saw people on time today that I, I haven't seen on time in the last eight months. But I believe that this is going to continue throughout the year, amen? Amen. As a teenager, there was nobody more inconsistent than me. No one more willing to give up when things got tough than me. But when you look at me and you look at my fight and you look at my consistency, know that it's not because I'm any different than you. Know that it's because the Holy Spirit has empowered me and has given me the strength. And that is the same Holy Spirit that is going to give you the strength for the things that you are going to conquer in this new year. Amen? And I believe the word of the Lord this morning. Divine compensation. That means it's something that is coming from a place that you don't even expect. And it's coming with a force, a magnitude, and a multiplication that you could not even expect. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anything that is divine, anything that is supernatural, when it manifests, think about, and this is not on the subject, but I'm going to go ahead and share it anyway. It's one of the perks of being a pastor. Think about when you uh, buy, what do they call them? Um, perennials? The, the type like a, a tulip or something that you put in the ground and it flourishes during the summer and during the winter it goes to sleep. Now when it flourishes again the next spring, does it flourish with the same amount of flowers that it did the last year or does it multiply? I bought a little tulip bulb like five years ago and the first year all I got was one little flower. The next year I got five. The year after that it turned into about nine or ten. That's in the natural. Imagine what it looks like when God steps in, when God is honoring your sacrifice, when God is honoring your prayer life, and then on top of that, you're going into a fast, and he has spoken to us and said, divine compensation? I'm in line. I would encourage you to get in line with me. Amen? Let's open our, our Bibles to Proverbs 29. Verse 18, and this Sunday and next Sunday, we're going to talk about uh, the power of vision given by God. The power of vision given by God. The joy of my life and my heart is to walk with you through the word of God and help you grow, okay? I approach what I do like a fourth grade teacher approaches her job before the beginning of the year, where she looks at everything that a fourth grader is supposed to know. And she says, and she begins her lesson plans. And she says, we're going to learn this. We're going to learn multiplication. We're going to learn uh, verbs. We're going to learn this is what we're going to. And, and she goes through systematically in order to make sure that her students have what they need and they're prepared for the next grade. I am here led by the Holy Spirit to teach you and walk with you through the word of God to make sure that you're prepared for your next level. How many of you have experienced a level shift since you started committing to this house? Amen. 
And I have a secret for you. Yes, the house is great and your pastor is great and all that kind of stuff. And I thank God for that. But you know what really, really makes it effective is that you have committed. Yeah. Yes. You could sit here and be under Benny Hinn. Paul himself, Jesus himself could be standing here teaching you the word. But if you don't commit right. to walking out the word, if you don't commit to saying, I'm going to grab this word and I'm going to make it mine. And I'm going to, I was so I was so amazed. There was somebody who, see, faith comes by hearing. So you're, you're given, if you believe what I say, faith arises in your heart to do what I'm telling you to do. And then you see the results. I was um, blessed by the New Year's uh testimonies. I was blessed by somebody this morning that said to me, they were putting into action the word of God. They came on Tuesday. They only had $100 left. And God said, put it in the offering. Hmm. Okay. I don't make a whole lot of emphasis on offering. I don't manipulate. I don't wait until it's really nice and emotional to say, we go and bring an offering. I'm not doing all that because my trust is in God. It's not in your pocket. My trust is in God. She heard God say to her, put it in. Next day, kids are looking in the refrigerator. Hey, it's looking kind of bare in here. She said, we're going to go to the grocery store tomorrow. She spoke and she said, we're going to go to the grocery store tomorrow. She spoke it. She declared it by faith. She didn't say, I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know what we're going to do. She didn't go into panic. She may have felt it on the inside, but she didn't allow it to come out. She said, we'll go to the grocery store tomorrow. That day, somebody went on to her website and ordered the largest package of her business, which was five times, four times more than what she sold. Wow. Hey. That day, that day, the word of God works. The word of God works. And I challenge you, get on this fast with us. Get on this fast. I don't care if halfway through the fast, you mess up and you fall off the wagon and you eat a Snickers bar, just get back on. Okay, I don't care if in the first week you struggle and you, you put some sugar in your coffee. Repent and get back on. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to teach you the power of consistency yes. in your walk with God. It's the same way when you mess up and you sin. Yeah, you messed up. You sinned. You did this. You did that. Run back to the cross. Yes. Run back to the blood. Jesus and God are not shaken by your sin. Yes. They just want you to come and get it right and allow the Holy Spirit to come in. Amen. So let's talk about the power of vision given by God because you have to have a vision for your life. You have to have a vision going into this new year. Somebody asked me, what is the vision that you have for the church? Honestly, I am still, to a certain extent, in the vision that we had last year for this church because I'm in the waiting of the fulfillment of that. So what is that? There's a certain amount of people that I want to see in these seats. There's a certain amount of people that I want to see uh, committed to this house. There is a certain uh, excellence that I want to see in everything that we do. So that is where we're going to remain until we see, amen, amen. the excellence and the spirit of God really, really just taking this church to the next level. Amen? But aside from, from the vision that I have for the church, you have to have a vision for your life. Okay? And I'm not saying go somewhere and sit down and try to figure out what, what do I need to do with my life? No. It begins on this fast. Right. It begins on this fast because I don't know about you, before I even crossed over into 2016, my ear, my, my hearing changed. My, literally, my spiritual hearing changed. It's like, I, you know how I always tell you guys that I pray, God, I want to hear your voice as clear as the person that is talking to me. It's, it was almost like that. It was, I, I'm not going to say it was scary, but it was so clear to the point where he pulled my ear on some things and let me know about some things that I have to do differently. He See, he don't, same way I give you pow pows, he gives me pow pows. Okay. And, but I could hear, I could hear that place of hearing is so important and that's where the vision comes from. Because the power of a vision comes from the source of the vision. The power of a vision comes from the source of a vision and that source has to be God. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. We live in a society and in a time where people feel like a budget is bad or rules are bad or things uh, that are going to curb us or keep us in line are bad because everybody wants to be free. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Everybody wants to do their own thing. Everybody wants to cast off restraint, 
We don't want to get married before we're intimate. We want to just spend whatever we make. We don't want to have any type of limitations. We don't want to have any type of restriction, okay? But I'm here to tell you that the vision of God, to a certain extent, is like your budget. Can I get an amen? Your budget tells you what you can spend, what you can't spend, and what you can spend your money on based on the information of your income and your expenses. Your vision, hello, tells you what you can do, what you can't do, who you should be walking with, what you should be spending your time and your energy with. There are many of you that are completely exhausted. You're emotionally, financially, mentally, spiritually exhausted because you are doing things that God has not called you to do. They may be good things, but they're not what God called you to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you have a vision, it, it aligns you, it gives you direction, it tells you what, it's like right now, if somebody came to me and they said, we would give you $500,000 for you to become, uh, you start training, uh, for you to become Miss Universe of 2017. That is not part of the vision that God has given me for my life. So because it's not part of the vision that God has given me for my life, I'm not going to put my energy there, even if the offer looks good. Even if it looks like, oh, there's money, there's opportunity, there's connections that can be made. Because that is not the vision that God has given me for my life, to spend my energy in that place is a waste. You see what I'm saying? God is going to allow you to be able to define where you're supposed to be spending your energy. God is going to allow you to understand the relationships that you're supposed to be spending your energy on. Can I get an amen? Because some of the relationships... You're trying to help people. Hear me. You're trying to help people. You're trying to help people. You're going above and beyond, but they don't want to help themselves. You understand what I'm saying? And you're spending all this energy trying to encourage them, trying to give them the word. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you the word, and I'm going to lead you to the river to drink. But I'm not going to sit there and force you to drink if you don't want to drink. you got to make some choices for yourself. I'm not going to put myself in an early grave trying to fight you to make you get right. You understand what I'm saying? Either you want to get right or you don't want to get right. Either you want revival in your life or you don't. Either you're hungry for God or you're not. And whoever decides to eat from the table that I set, you're going to receive the blessing. And those that do not eat, you're just going to be hungry. I'm going to feel bad that you're hungry, but I'm not going to lose sleep. Because it's a personal decision. You cannot put yourself in an early grave because you're trying to get people to do what they don't want to do. That's a whole nother message. Okay, Acts 26. Acts 26, verse 19. Very, very short little phrase. Therefore, this is Paul speaking. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So this is Paul. He is giving his testimony to King Agrippa. And he's talking to the king about when the Lord Jesus came to him on the road of Damascus, where he was struck blind, where he heard the voice of the Lord speaking to him. And God was very specific. The Lord Jesus, excuse me, was very specific with his purpose, with what Paul was supposed to be doing, how he was supposed to go to the Gentiles, the purpose, the purpose of his life. So he is declaring and he's saying to King Agrippa, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I declare in the name of Jesus that 2016 is going to be the year that we as a people and as individuals will be obedient to the heavenly vision that has been spoken over our lives. Because that's where the increase is going to come. That's where the blessing is going to come. That's where the overflow is going to come. Number one, so what is a vision? What is a vision? You hear people talk about, what is a vision? What is a vision? And, and one of the things that I heard the Holy Spirit say to me last night, he said, purpose is the end goal. Purpose, your purpose is the end goal. But vision, the vision is how you get there. Purpose, your purpose is the end goal. But the vision that gives you are, that God gives you are the steps of how to get to the end goal, which is your purpose. Number one, vision is an awareness that God places in the heart of man. Vision is an awareness that God places in the heart of man. This is why it's important for you to have an awesome 
church where you feel the spirit of God, where your worship is powerful, and every time your pastor speaks, that you feel your spirit come alive, that you know that there is a power that is um, that is carrying those words, because then it allows your heart to come alive. It allows your heart to get hungry for God. There are people watching right now from all over the world that they feel hungry because they're not getting what they feel like they need at their local church. So they get online. They get on uh, the YouTube. They listen to the messages. Their heart is coming alive. That is the best place to be. Because when your heart comes alive, this is when your heart that knows how to respond to God. When there's a heart of stone, there's no response to God. Think about this. Think about a, a couple that is married. What is the difference between a newlywed couple that hasn't been through anything, the way they respond to each other, the way they look at each other, the way they talk to each other. They just look at each other and almost drool they love each other so much. I mean, you can just see it. You can tell. But what happens to that same couple after she's been unfaithful in year five and he found out about it in year six? Suddenly there's an anger. There's a hardness of heart. There's no response. There's no connection. Why? Because the, the, the connection has been broken. It's been lost. It's been severed. It's the same way when you live a life of sin. Your heart becomes uh, your heart becomes hard. There's a separation between you and God. So when you're getting the word, that word is like, you know, have you ever had a really, really hard piece of bread? And you take that hard piece of bread and you and you dip it into warm soup. It softens the word of God, the atmosphere of worship, the spirit of God. It begins to soften your heart. It begins to remove that heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. He allows you to feel again. There are areas of your heart that you have not felt anything for years and your heart has been hard. You haven't been able to love. Your things happen and you don't even respond because you're so calloused. Because you've been through so much. You're so callous. You're so tired. You're so broken, but in the presence of God, in the worship, as the spirit of God comes forth, it's like, it's like a divine, a holy rain that comes and it rains on your heart and it makes your heart what? Sensitive. Say the presence of God makes my heart sensitive. When your heart is sensitive, you can hear. So the vision is an awareness it's a knowledge. It's an understanding. It's a light bulb that comes on about your life that God places in your heart. The same young lady that was giving me um, the testimony this morning, she works in, uh, in fashion design. And she creates clothing. and um, This is her personal, her personal business. And she started doing, what do you call them? Skirt soirees. So she'll go to somebody's house and it's almost like a Mary Kay party and she brings her skirts and, and the ladies are able to buy, you know, these uh, skirts that she has designed and she has made. And she said, Pastor Joanne, she said, one of the first ones that I did, she said, I don't know how it happened, but I just, I began to share my testimony. I, I just began to share with the women about my life and suddenly it dawned on me that this thing, this talent, this love that I have for sewing and making clothes is not just a business to make money, but suddenly I was able to see the ministry. Suddenly I was able to see, she said, my mother was sitting there and the tears were just coming down her eyes as I was able to connect with these women and share with them my testimony and what I've been through in my life and how it encouraged she received the vision that God had for her since the foundation of the world that he had prepared for this season. She may not always be in this season, but she's been faithful to the vision that God has given her in this season. An awareness, an awareness, an awakening happened. An awakening in her heart that showed her, guess what, this love of passion that I placed on the inside of you. Somebody would say, that's not very spiritual. That's a secular thing, fashion. Fashion is not a spiritual thing. And God is saying, do not be religious. I'm not religious. I place this thing in you because it's going to give you a tool and a way to connect with people that may never go to a church. Oh, but they like fashion. They want to have their swag on. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, so, so that vision comes as an awareness. I'm here to tell you that no matter where you are in life, I don't care if you're 85 years old, 90. I don't care. It doesn't matter where you are. There is a vision that God has for you right now yeah. in this season. And it's an awareness that it's going to awaken in your heart. And you're going to say, wow, that's why I love this. That's why I enjoy cooking for people. This is why I like fashion. This, and God will show you how to use that thing that you love 
for his glory. He will show you. So that's the first thing that vision is. Vision is an awareness that God places in the heart of man. Number two, vision is the assignment that God gives you for your purpose. Vision is the assignment that God gives you for your purpose. When I uh, was a little girl, the vision for my life at that time was singing because it was my gift, it was my talent, it's what I had, and my parents forced me to do it. Can I get an amen? I didn't have a choice. Me and my dad would get into arguments about the fact that I didn't want to sing, and he would make me sing anyway. It was the assignment that was given to me for that season, okay, for my purpose. The purpose, remember, is the end goal. The vision is the steps that God gives you to get there, okay? And the vision can shift and change from season to season. So the vision for this year may be X, Y, Z, but then that vision will turn into something else, for the next year. It is up, see, that's why you can't just get on autopilot. Wake up somebody. Say, no autopilot. You can't just put your life, I, I can't put this church on autopilot. I can't say, okay, these are the leaders, this is what everybody does, and just put it on. No, the church is a living organism that is going to change. It's going to develop. People's lives are going to change. People's needs are going to change. The position, their vision, their personal vision for their life is going to change. So we have to make adjustments. We have to transition. We have to make moves. We have to not be afraid of the changes and of the transitions. You can't put your life on autopilot. Vision, vision is... Uh, the assignment that God gives for your purpose. So he started with me with singing. Then once he started me with singing, then he gave me a record deal. Then I was on the road with all the biggest gospel artists in the world. And then I thought, man, this is it. This is, I'm going to retire doing this. I'm going to win Grammys. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, you know, just being excited that I was living my dream. But that vision was only for a season. Then the season changed, and then he took me into a season of desert. Oh, nobody likes the desert season, but they're necessary. Somebody say they're necessary. And the vision for that season of desert that he had for me was that I had to learn how to find myself in him and define myself in him and not define myself by what I do. Then once again, what I learned in the first season of singing, and then what I learned in my desert season of finding myself in him, then transitioned into a change of heart, which then brought a new vision of wanting to help people make it through their desert season like I made it through my desert season. So I, now I just, instead of wanting to sing all the time, I just want to teach, I want to disciple. See, the, the, the end goal and the end purpose is, Joanne, I created you for my purpose to help people get to me. That's the purpose for all of us. All of our purpose, we all have the same purpose, is to draw people unto Jesus. But the vision that he gives each individual person in order to accomplish that is different. Everybody's method is different. Some people are going to do it at the grocery store. Some people are going to do it through their business. Some people are going to do it, I mean, he's going to give us a million different ways. Because there's millions and millions of different people that need to experience the love of Jesus. And they're not all going to get it the same way. Amen? Vision is the assignment that God gives you for your purpose. So it's that specific thing that he's saying, this is what you're going to do in this season. And he shows you how to use it for his glory. Number three, vision is discovering God's purpose for your life. Vision is discovering God's purpose for your life. Okay? You don't decide. You don't decide your purpose. You discover it. Does that make sense? Well, Joanne, how do I discover the vision? How do I discover the purpose? How do I know what I'm supposed to be doing? Pay attention to what you love. Pay attention to what you love. Okay? There's a reason why you love that. If it's sports, there's a reason why you love sports. If it's fashion, there's a reason why God placed that there. Okay? Pay attention to what you hate. Pay attention to what aggravates you and makes you angry. It makes me sick the way School teachers do X, Y, Z. It just makes me so angry when, when you understand? Because if, when you hate, when you, when you actively hate something, when something really, really gets on your nerves, then God is empowering you to change it. God is empowering you to change it. God put that, that dissatisfaction in you concerning that thing because he wants to put a fuel and a fire under you to motivate you to make a change, to do something different. 
when Dr. Martin Luther King looked at the, at the, at the scope of the nation, he hated the racism that he saw. He, he hated the killings. He hated everything. But that hatred of what he saw gave him a vision for what he was supposed to do. And when he walked out that vision, he walked with the entire nation in order to bring a change regarding that thing that he hated. Which as a church, once again, we're right there right now. Because there's no Dr. Martin Luther King now. But we, as the church, we have to extend love. We have to extend intercession. We have to extend prayer. And we have to get a vision, not just for ourselves and for our church, but for our nation. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's important. It's imperative. But your vision, so pay attention to what you love. Pay attention to what you hate. Pay attention to what you wish was different. And then accept the call to say, there was nothing that I hate more than going to a church and the spirit of God is not there. Yeah. There is nothing that I hate more than to go to a worship service and as soon as the Holy Spirit just begins to peak in the building, all right, thank you so much. Now the announcement for this week, this on Tuesday, we're going to go to the baking. And then, 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 then it's like, I, I didn't come here for your jokes. I didn't come here. Or your announcements. I know the announcements are important, but can, can, can we wait till the Holy Spirit just, just give him a chance? Because I need him today. I've been to a lot of churches, and it was a day when I really, really needed him. It was a day that I wanted to walk out of my marriage. It was a day that I was frustrated. Come on, somebody. And I didn't need jokes. I didn't need announcements. I needed God. And they wouldn't let him in the building. And it made me angry. And then now here I am. You understand what I'm saying? Pay attention. Pay attention. You will discover your purpose. <laughs> Look at Psalms 139. Psalms 139, verse 16. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, in the days that were formed for me, when as there was none of them. What does this mean? The Spanish translation says, uh, every day was designed. Every day was designed before one day had passed. You have to understand that you're not here by chance. You're not here randomly. God made you the way he made you on purpose. He knew what family you needed to come into. Well, I hate my family. What is it that you hate about your family? To so pay attention to what you hate about your family and decide in my family, things are gonna be done differently. You see what I'm saying? Don't stay in that bitterness and that anger. I'm going to do things different. My dad wasn't there for me. I'm angry at my dad. Okay, then you be a different dad. You be different to your children. You, 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 you break that curse and you say, because maybe the, the passion that you need in order to be that amazing father that you should be has to be fueled from a place of disgust. God knows what all of us need to be moved. Amen? Every day, every day that we live, has been designed by God. He places opportunities before us. He gives us vision. He gives us uh, you know, relationships. He gives us so many things. So that, that vision and that purpose has to be discovered. It has to be unearthed. You have to look for it. You have to pay attention. You can't just go through life, getting up in the morning, making breakfast, going to the same job that you've been to you know, for, for the past 30 years, and not even think about life. You gotta take a minute. Especially now that we're in January. Take a minute. Just take, take a time out and begin to think about your life. What do you want to be different? Because if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same thing. What do you want different? What do, you, do you want your business to be different? Do you want your marriage to be different? Do you, you, you have to take a time out and really pay attention. And not just be on autopilot so that you can discover. So you can discover that purpose and you can discover the vision for this season. Somebody say this season. Number four, God's vision gives you stability and direction in life. God's vision gives you stability and direction in life. Okay? When somebody invites me to come and minister, if their purpose and their vision for their event does not line up with my purpose, my vision, and what I do, of what God has shown me, then I'm not going to accept that invitation. It doesn't matter what they pay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it doesn't line up with the vision. See, if your vision, if your vision is to have a healthy household, if your vision is to help have a healthy body, if your vision 
is to have a healthy body, then you have to start doing things that align with that vision. So the vision for your health has to give you direction. It has to tell you what you can and cannot do. Okay? So if you want a good relationship with your children, it's so funny because last night, um, Ariana, they were, we were getting, re getting them ready for bed, and I said, get upstairs and, you know, we'll spend some time talking before you go to bed. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And she got excited, went upstairs, put on her pajamas, and she got in my bed. We put Hadar, and Hadar was already asleep. And I laid down in the bed, and I just began to talk to her. Now, Ariana's just five, but you would think she's 20. <laughs> and she began to talk to me, and it was in that moment that I noticed, man, she's changed. She's grown. And if you don't take the time to stop and pay attention, you miss it. And she was just, you know, she's just, and mom, and I just, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I just, I felt like I was talking to an adult. But, but she had changed. She had changed. You understand what I'm saying? I have to know as a mother, based on the relationship that I want to have with my daughter, if I ignore her and if I don't spend time with her, then I'm not going to have the outcome of the vision that I want with her. But because I want her to trust me, because I want her to, you know, uh, when she gets to high school, to be, you know, comfortable enough to say to me, mommy, this boy said this, or this happened, or that happened. I, because I want that. That's the vision that I have for my relationship with her. I'm saying, okay, God, how do I sow into that? So that vision for what I want gives me direction on how to handle her. Am I making sense? Yes. We can't be on autopilot. You got to pay attention because that vision, that vision will give you stability and it will give you direction, okay? If the vision is a house and you want a new house for your family, then that vision is going to tell you, stop spending on all your money on shopping. Right. It gives you stability. It gives you direction. It tells you what to do. Amen? Amen. Let's move on. Uh, number one, two, three, four, five. Are we number? Okay. Vision. Now listen to this. Vision is given by God, but ambition is the flesh. Vision is given by God, but ambition is the flesh. When you look at the world, the world, they're most of the time, the majority of the time, they're full of ambition, but they are not full of a God-given vision. Okay? Their ambition is selfish. Their ambition is, I want to have the most Twitter followers. I want to make the most money. I want to be the biggest artist or the biggest star. I want to be the celebrity. Everything is about attaining something for personal gain. Okay? Vision that is given by God, it's not about attaining something for personal gain. The vision that God gives you, it's, it's to bless the world. It's to bless your family. It's to bless your church. It's to bless your community. It's most of the time, vision that is given by God is really not about you. Hello? Amen. Let me say that again. Vision that is truly given by God, most of the time is really not about you. But the amazing thing about God, like I always tell you, is that when you have a vision to bless others, all he does is he turns right back around and blesses you because of your obedience. You understand what I'm saying? But the heart, he's dealing with the heart. Because vision comes, the vision has to come from God. We cannot get caught up into ambition because then that's when we open the door to greed. Hello? That's where the pastors start, you know, dipping into the plate more than they should and not taking care of the needs of the church because now there is an ambition. There's an ambition that I got to wear Louis Vuitton. There's an ambition that I got to drive a Mercedes. There's an ambition that I got to have red bottom shoes. There's, an, an, there's a fleshly ambition to have what the Jones have. You see what I'm saying? But vision is not going to look like ambition. Vision says, I'm going to sacrifice whatever I need to sacrifice to bless someone else. I'm going to do what I need to do to make this business come up off the ground because I know that it's going to help somebody. It's going to solve somebody's problem. I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to love people. I'm going to help people. Vision allows you to help and build your family. Some of you come from families that were very, very broken. But that vision that God has given you for your family will say to you, I'm willing. You got, you got women who they will spend $2,000 on a weed, but their children have no shoes. Now, you know, I'm not criticizing Puerto Rican and African American, and nowadays even the white girls. Everybody. 
Because everybody wants to look like a superstar. Everybody wants to look glamorous. Everybody wants to look like Victoria's Secret just to go to Kroger. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they walk in through Kroger like on 12 inch heels, like, put on some gym shoes and put your hair in a bun and be green. You understand what I'm saying? But that ambition, that lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, I want more, I want more, I want, I want, I want. Oh, well, if she got that new hair, I want that new hair. If she got new eyelashes, I want new eyelashes. If he got that new car, I want a new car. How about getting a vision that comes from God where you're so free that it doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. Because your identity is in who God called you to be. Your identity is in the vision. You see what I'm saying? The identity is in the fact that you know that you're not here by chance. That God placed you on the earth with a purpose. And that you're going to affect the lives of people. That you're going to make that the earth and the world is going to be better because you are here. That this place is going to be better because you are here. Wherever it is that you, you make your job better. You make your, your the, the, the fellowship with your co-workers better. You make your family better. You make your relationships better. You make your community better. You make your church better. Everywhere that you go, you make it better. Why? Because you have a vision for yourself and you know who God has called you to be. And you carry that with a confidence that nobody can steal from you. So when you have that confidence, it doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. Paul said, man, I'm good if I have and I'm good when I don't have. That means that God can instantly make you a millionaire overnight, but you're just as happy and full of joy as you were when you were on food stamps because the money has nothing to do with how you see yourself. You just know it gives you options to bless more people and to do more things. But it doesn't define you. Vision versus ambition. We're not going to walk in ambition. We're not going to be selfish people. Even in church, there are many people in church that are just selfish. You come to church because you're selfish. You come to church because you want to hear a word that's going to help you get through. You want to hear a word that's going to help you feel happy because you're depressed the rest of the time. God is not calling us to be a selfish people. God is calling us to people that have to be a people that have vision and know I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a world changer. I'm, I carry the kingdom of God to destroy the works of darkness. So that means I, I, I was excited about uh, 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 a testimony that I received from somebody else that there was somebody that had been coming to the house for some kind of other business or whatever and some way, somehow, over the time that has passed, just this past week, that person that was not saved gave their lives to the Lord right in their living room. Now that is vision. Now that is prosperity. Now that is blessing. That's something that doesn't rust. The salvation of a soul is something that does not rust. The time that you spend with your children is something that does not rust or, or go away. The vision that God has given you to bless your family, to bless your home, to bless the world around you. See, we want to look at the world and say, the world needs to change. But guess what? The world is not going to change until we change as individuals. The church is not going to change until we, each individual pastor, until each individual pastor changes, there won't be change. Until each minister changes, there won't be change. Until each worship leader changes, there won't be change. Until each musician on an individual level stops being pimp. You got to pay me. You got I understand that people should be paid and honored for what they do. But when that's your only motivation, when that's the only reason that you come to church is to get a check, you need to repent. Because if not, you're going to go to hell. I'm sorry. You got to get your life right with God. The vision cannot be ambitious. It has to be a vision to make the world a better place through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why we're going to Charlotte on Thursday. Because young people are being killed. Because people are angry. Because Black Lives Matter is affecting our nation. And people are angry. And things are going to get worse before they get better. And if we don't turn our hearts back to pray, if in my people do not pray, then God cannot hear from heaven. And God cannot heal the land. That is the vision. That is part of the vision that God has given Corey and Joanne for 2016. And we have to refocus the nation back to prayer. Back to the heart of God. Because if not, this nation is going to explode. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to blow up worse than it did in the 60s. Hear me. We've got to pray. 
And when we are in those surroundings where people are spewing that hatred and you see it, you got to bring the peace of God and you got to refocus people and get them to, 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 to put their heart back into God and say, this is why we have to pray. This is why we have to seek God. This is why as individuals we have to, we can't hate. We cannot fight hate with hate. We cannot fight anger with anger. It doesn't accomplish anything. We can only do it by the presence of God. We need a move of God. See, that's the vision that God has given us. So that tells us what we have to do in this year. So if that meant for us to be able to effectively do that, I have to train not doing the Sunday night service and make you make a decision about coming to Sunday morning as opposed to just sitting here with you guys on Sunday night because the vision has shifted, I have to align myself in submission to the vision so that we can go with God. Because the vision gives you direction, it gives you stability, it tells you what you need to be doing and where you need to be spending your energy. Father, I thank you. I pray you're getting something out of this. So no ambition. We want vision. And this is the, I think we're going to have to split this message into three parts because I'm literally only on the first point, which is what is vision. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight other points that have to do with this message about the power of vision given by God. So this is the last point that I'll go into today. So number one, we said vision is an awareness that God places in the heart of man. Number two, vision is the assignment that God gives you for your purpose. Number three, discovering God's purpose for your life, discovering, discovering your purpose for your life is the vision. Number four, God's vision gives you stability and direction for your life. Somebody say stability. stability. Direction. direction. Number five, vision is given by God. Ambition is the flesh. And number six, divine assignment has nothing to do with talent or ability, but has everything to do with the call of God. Let me say that again. What is a vision? It's a divine assignment. It's a divine assignment from God that has nothing to do with your talent or your ability, but has everything. It has everything to do with the call of God. It has everything to do with the call of God. Yes, God will use your talents. God will use your ability. God, God will use, God uses my voice to worship. God uses Dravius and worship. God uses, you know, he, he uses us and the talents that he's given us, but he's not limited to the talents that we already possess in order to do what he's telling us to do. Everything has to do with the call of God. And when he calls you, he will prepare you. When he calls you, he will equip you. When he gives you that vision and you have an ear to hear what he's telling you to do, all you have to do is get with him. Let me tell you, I don't know how to preach. Pastor, you preach so good. Look, catch me on a day I'm not anointed. Why do you think I pray so much? Why do you think I fast so much? I don't have no doctor's degree in theology. I didn't go to school. I didn't go to Bible school. I don't have all of that stuff under my belt. I can't say to you, oh, I studied with this person, or I studied under that person, or I studied under this bishop or that bishop. I don't have any of that. All I have is a call of God and a husband and a father that said to me, we believe on the call of God that is on your life. Run with it now. Do not forsake the call of God. Do what I call you to do, and watch how I will bless my people. That's what I stand on every day. I don't stand on my talent. I don't stand on my gifts. I don't stand on my ability because guess what? Even if I can preach the best sermons in the world, it's not a guarantee that it's going to change your life. But when you come clothed in the call of God, when you come clothed in the anointing of the Spirit of God, your confidence is not in flesh, but your confidence is in the power and the Spirit of God. And I'm here to tell you this morning, this month as we fast, your vision is going to become clearer than it's ever been. What you're supposed to be doing is going to become than it's ever been. You're going to receive direction and vision for your life like you've never had it before. And he's going to give you the strength to walk it out. Yeah. See, we're not going to be uh, you know, on the merry-go-round anymore. No more merry-go-round. We're not going to be going in circles. We're not going to be on the hamster wheel anymore. No, because we're in a different place. We're in a different place with God. We're in a different place of relationship. We're in a different place of intimacy. And we understand we're ready for the vision. We're ready to commit. Well, we're ready to walk out this call that God has given us. Why? Because the fear is attached to the fact that you don't feel like you can do it. That's what the fear is attached to. The fear is attached to the fact that you feel like you can't do what in your heart you want to do. Guess what? It has nothing to do with what you can and cannot do. It has everything to do with what God wants to do through you. On that note, stand up on your feet and lift your hands to God.
Father, I thank you now. I thank you now, Father, that as we come into this first Sunday of 2016, I thank you, Father God, that you are shaking your people to the core. Down to the core of who they are. Down to the core of who they are, God. And I thank you, Father God, that you are bringing us into this season of fasting and of seeking your face, Father God, because there is a new vision that you are imparting to your people on an individual level and on a corporate level. Right now, lift your hands high. Lift your hands high. Lift your hands high. Holy Spirit, right now, we ask for your strength. We ask for your grace. We understand that we can't do it on our own. Everything that you place in our hearts, we cannot do it on our own. And we come to your, we come to your throne and we ask for mercy and we ask for grace and we ask for help in the time of need. We thank you right now. Begin to open up your mouth and declare, Father God, I accept this new vision. I receive it now by faith. I receive the new vision by faith that you have for my life. I receive the grace that you are giving me to walk out this new year and this new season. I receive it now by faith. No weapon formed against me will prosper and my confidence is completely in you. Say that with me. Say that with me. Say my confidence is completely in you. I bind the spirit of fear and doubt that paralyzed me last year. No more. In the name of Jesus, I have a call. I have a purpose. I got stuff to do. And I'm going to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody thank God for his spirit right now. Somebody thank God for his spirit right now. Thank you right now. Thank you right now. And I'm going to say this very quickly. If you're in this place and you have not been walking with God, everyone begin to pray. If you're in this place and you have not been walking with God, you are not saved. You are not walking in obedience to the word of God. You may be a backslider. I don't know. But I, today is the day of salvation. Every day that you have life is the day of salvation. And you cannot continue to ignore the voice of God as we go into this new year. It is time to get your life right with God. And if I'm talking to you, you know you feel uncomfortable right now. But I need you to fight through that uncomfortable feeling and just lift your hand. Everybody close your eyes. I need you to just lift your hand to the sky. I need you to just lift your hand and say, God, I need to come. I need to come back to that place. Yes, I see you. I see you. I see you. Everyone pray. Everyone pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you needing you. I'm a sinner. And I understand that I've been trying to do things in my own strength. Please forgive me of my sin. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. It's only through the blood that I can be saved. Wash me. Now Holy Spirit. Fill me now. Give me the strength. To run this race. In the name of Jesus we pray. It's that simple. Five minutes ago you were in sin. And if you died in your sin. And in your rebellion against God. You would open your eyes in hell. But your choice to say. Jesus by faith. I receive you. Just that. Jesus by faith I receive you. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you shed your blood for me. And it's only your blood that can erase my sin and save me. I receive that blood. That's the same blood that you have to run to as a Christian and as a believer. When you mess up and when you fall short. That's the same blood you run to. Wash me again. Jesus, wash me again. What the devil does is he makes you feel guilty. And because you feel so guilty, you don't come to church. Oh, if I go to church, pastor's going to see right through me. And she's going to know that I just slept with someone. So she's going to know, you know what, come anyway. I don't care. And I've told you a million times, I don't care if you come in here smelling like alcohol. I don't care if you come in here smelling like weed. I don't care if you rolled out of bed of that adulterous affair and walked in the church. I don't care. I just want you to get here. Because if you can get here, you will hear a word that is going to inspire you to run back to the cross, run back to the blood of Jesus, to know that Jesus loves you more than your mistakes. And that he already paid the price on Calvary. And 
And all you have to do is every time you mess up, keep running to the cross and just say, Holy Spirit, help me. And then do what I tell you to do. As your pastor, do what I tell you to do. Pray like I tell you to pray. Take notes like I tell you to take notes. Pray at home. Read your word. Listen to the word. Turn off those borderline pornography R-rated movies because all they make you do is want things you ain't got no business wanting. I'm telling you, I'm not going to steer you the wrong way. God has anointed me as a pastor in this generation that is going to turn the hearts of people back to God. And it's going to help you know who God really is. God is not as mean and religious as people think he is. He's a loving God. But he's a holy God. And he's a righteous God. There's nobody like him. Amen? I'm going to ask you to take your seats. Before we go, we're going to prepare our tithe and our offering. And you're going to have a new vision for your life. And God is going to reveal it to you during this fast. And we're going to see the product and the blessing and the overflow of that for the rest of 2016. And guess what? When we come into 2017, thank you, my dear, he will give us new vision. Because you would have fulfilled your assignment in this present vision. And you'll graduate. And you'll go from glory to glory. That's how this thing works. Okay? If you need an envelope, raise your hand. For those that joined us online, the ushers would serve the people. Thank you so much. Uh, you can also give from your phone. Text RAINFIRE, one word, RAINFIRE, like rain that falls from the sky, FIRE, to 77977. Text RAINFIRE to 77977. And you can give right from your phone and not have to fill out an envelope. You will only have to do your profile one time. And then any time that you want to give, you can just go into that application and give however you want to give. Amen? But if you still need an envelope.